Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're in Blender and we're looking at the map or open map pop tutorial. Nice tutorial, lots of um, goodies in this tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. I have my plane here and it is a solid red. And I also not going to be creating the texture materials that we see that we saw in there so that's the orange fade not going to be creating that in this tutorial so I've gone over textured blends already and I think that will just take take up too much time away from the actual content so I'm not going to do that I'm going to go straight into the map and we're going to create the map entirely in Blender so let's go ahead and we're going to create a plane and we're just going to hit S and X so you shift and A to create the plane and that goes to add or you can use add down here in the file menu part of the 3D viewpoint of the file menu of the 3D viewpoint and then we're going to hit S and X to scale on the X axis to get something about um, this size is good let's get up a bit good so with that now we're going to press tab I'm going to show you two ways to do this actually and we're going to in edit mode to go press tab to go to edit mode or you can go to edit mode here in our 3d viewpoint file menu by toggling from object to edit mode and we're going to hit ws ws and we're going to select these two and hit ws ws and i'm going to press a to deselect and a to select everything good i'm going to press x and then we're going to delete we're going to x is going to delete and all of these options here can be accessed via the mesh option here. So we're just deleting some we're just deleting some stuff here and we're gonna delete the faces. So pressing X, we're gonna delete the faces. Oh make sure you you select only faces. Good. So this way we can add faces to the individuals. Good, so we're just adding faces to all of these so we're going to select four points here and press F and select four points and press F and if you can imagine this is representing the different folds of the um, paper that we have here and this is one way to do it good I'm going to create a plane and let me just lift this up on the Z axis so that we can see it Good. So currently it was on the same Z same um, Z number as the plane below it, and that was causing it to disappear. So we just move that. So we're gonna just hit S and X on this new plane, scale it up to get it to a similar size. That looks about the same size. And I'm gonna press Tab to go into Edit Mode, or you can go into Edit Mode via Edit Mode down in your file menu here, part of your 3D viewpoint. I want to hit Ctrl and R for loop cut and you see in the middle we have this purple line that's in the middle of the box if you look at the origin point we see the purple line and we're just going to scroll up with our middle mouse button so that we have four sections and the Ctrl R stands for loop cut then we're going to left click once and left click again and we have our loop cut Right, the second way is particularly faster, but it's always good to know how to subdivide also because you're going to need to know that also. So we have the loop cut. And the loop cut can be used to cut vertically and horizontally, but for this case we cut vertically. Good. So I'm just going to go ahead and move one because both of them are doing the same thing really. Good. Let's move this one and use this one instead. The first one. I'm going to have this in the middle now. So what we want to do now is that we want this, we want the middle, the middle edges here, these edges here, we want to lift them up, good, so that the paper can have a rise effect looking like a brochure. So we're just going to come out of our camera mode, pressing zero to come out, and then we're going to use the middle mouse button and pan until we're at a comfortable position to which we can see the rise. We want to make sure that we're still in edit mode and that we're holding shift to select all the vertices for these middle edges. With these middle edges selected, we're going to pull this blue line and pull it up. 
Good. Good. And then we're just going to toggle to zero to see how it looks. That looks about right. Toggle out. And let's see how it looks down here. Looks about right. We can lift up a little bit more. And we have what looks like a map or a brochure here. And that's looking really good. Good. So next, we want the brochure to be at a side angle. So we're going to hit R and X. And we're going to rotate on the X plane. And we're going to have it rotate towards us at a slight angle. Let's go ahead and move this plane down. Good, so it doesn't interfere. And we are seeing that it is indeed at an angle and it does look good. Right, wonderful. So, next part of it is that we actually want to add, add a little fake perspective to this. So, instead of trying to um, add true perspective, we're just going to go ahead and select the top vertices here holding shift then hold s and scale them in right and we get something along this line about here Let's see if we can um rotate it i may want to just spike these a little bit more let me just pan out and uh, rotate on the x and just spike them just a little bit more because i think that they need to be spiked a bit more of these right here good and then I can come back on an RX right so this looks a lot more like it right and there's gonna be a little bit amount of play to this so you have to keep that in mind so we have our paper now that we want to be want to forward so the next part we're gonna do is that we're gonna to go to our properties editor and we're going to go to our mesh panel in our properties editor we're going to go down and to reach shape keys and we're going to add two shape keys the first one being the basis to reference the second one being what we're morphing to and we're going to go ahead and add some morphs to this so if we look at this point right here let's pull it up we're going to pull this plus button out because we want the vertex data we're looking for the vertex data right here i'm going to need that so if we look at this point on the x-axis this point is negative one good so what we want is that we want all of these points to converge on the x-axis and that will help us that converge to this point right here on the x-axis and that will give us the forward so all of the vertices need to converge to this point so to do that we're just going to copy the x data here so the x data is zero not negative one that was the y data so we're going to copy that as zero i mean we could type it but we're just going to copy it and we're going to select this vertice making sure that our key one is selected and we're going to paste that zero and you see it's converged to the same x point as this point and we're going to do that the same thing for every vertice here make it converge to zero Converge to zero, converge to zero, converge to zero, converge to zero, and converge to zero. And the key now has now stored the end state of this fold. Uh, so we press tab, it comes out. And if we if we um move through the value slider, we can see that indeed it is folding in and out. Good, very simple. Nice fold in and out, and it does fold perfectly, you know, because once it's zero, we don't gonna see anything in the render. Right, we don't see anything in the middle. Well, barely, but we're not really seeing anything in the middle, so. Good, so we have our folding map. So the next part is that we want to add the line that goes around the map. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna duplicate this with Shift ND, and then we're gonna go and Go into tab mode and we're going to come off of key one go into basis in fact let's just get rid of this key altogether because it's not necessary let's just press minus to get rid of the shape keys on the duplicate then we're going to go to tab to go to edit mode we're going to press a to deselect and a once more to select everything so we want all the vertices selected then we're going to go ahead and press i 
I'm going to push the mouse up. And I stands for inset. And it's going to create vertices that um, are inserted from the original vertices so that we have a perfect fit within the um, a perfect fit within the original duplicate. So this looks about good. We can scale it in a bit more, but I think this looks good as it is. And we're gonna go ahead and do this, and we're going to deselect everything. Then we're gonna select the outside vertices because we don't need these anymore. And we're just going to select them and delete. So delete vertices. So we have the inset right here. Let's go ahead and select everything in the inset and let's remove the um let's remove the faces. So I'm gonna use X and faces, remove oh X and only faces and let's remove these edges here. Good, so removing the edges for each one of these. Good, so we don't want any middle edges. And now we have a complete border. So the next part for this border is, let's lift this up a little bit. But we want to convert this border to a curve. It is currently a mesh. We want to convert it to a curve. So we're going to hit Alt and C. And we're going to hit Curve from Mesh and Text. Good. So this now is a curve. Good. Right. And what we want to do next is that we're going to add a bevel to this curve. So we need a bevel target. So we're going to go ahead and go to object and um, we're going to go to add, sorry, and we're going to add a curve and a circle. Good. We're going to make this curve 2D and we're going to go ahead and scale it down. Good. Because it's going to need to be about this height. We're going to put it outside because we don't need it in the viewpoint. Good. And then we're going to select this new curve that we've created and we're going to go into our properties panel. Good. And then we're going to navigate to the curve edit, the properties editor. I'm going to go to the curve panel and under the curve panel, we're going to go ahead to um, path. Is it path animation or geometry? Geometry. And we're going to add our bevel. And it's going to see this dropper tool and I'm going to select the bezel circle we just created and you see the bezel come over. It's a bit thick so we have to decrease the circle size a bit more and it's gone down. But we notice that the bezier is a tube so we need to make it a bit more flat, flat. and to do that we have to go to our bezier circle and I'm just going to move it closer so that we can see it together with what's actually happening. Just zooming in. So right now the circle is perfect, but if I scale this on the y-axis and make it flat, we see that the resultant Bezier line also becomes flatter. Good. Then so press Tab and press F2 now to render it. You can see that it is indeed flatter. Good. So what we're going to do next, we're just going to go and give this a material. Let's give it a white material, give it shaders, and come here so that we can see it better. And let's give our bezel uh, a flat shaders material to make it white. Good, and we can see this a lot better. And let's go on SX, scale it in a bit. Good. Right, and there we have a perfect fit. Right, let's go ahead and just lift it up a bit. Okay, when I inset this, I should have inserted it a bit further in, but that's okay. As for now, it's still good. So when you do your inset, just inset it a bit further in. Right. Well, because I'm in a tutorial, you know, I'm just in a bit of a rush. So doing the inset process, just inset it a bit further in to get a better bezel. Good, and then we're going to go into our bezel tool. We're going to go into the, set the bezel, sorry. And we're going to go into our curve panel. 
I'm only going to shape and I'm gonna make the render about 12. In fact, let's make it 16. And let's make whoopsie, which is 16. Let's make this 16 as well. Good. To make the a bit more believable. Good, and that gives us our bezel. And if we go now to the path animation or the geometry itself and we toggle and we start to and we slide the um, resolution slider or oh, making sure this is selected good and we also need to make sure that this is oh, let me check to see what kind of thing this is let me check to see that this is the correct type tools option it is indeed a bezier. Good. I think it's slick. Let's go out and check it out. Okay, so we need to get rid of this U. Right. So the problem here is this U. And this means it's a closed loop. So we had to make it an open loop which means that we'll have to come to the top here and go to this bed select this um going to tap press going to edit mode sorry we're going to select this um vertice right here and we're going to hit e for extrude and we're just going to extrude it down here good and it's going to take a little bit you know on last try this did it for me automatically but that's okay these things do happen and just going to and just going to move this up and down so that it lines up good alright that looks good so now that it's open and we slide the resolution slider we can see that this is, is it is indeed animating good. so we had to uncheck this and this option means either the bezier is has a closed loop or is open and for you to animate the resolution for the bevel you have to have it open so this has to be unchecked in active plan okay with that so now that we have this done you know and it's animating nicely we can move on to the next part which is the um, the location markers I'm gonna hit shift and a to add a circle, make sure it's a mesh and we're going to scale down good and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this mesh lift it up press Z see if it's duplicated, no, let's shift in D to duplicate it and yep, it's up now next, I'm going to go to the modifier tools, add modifier and to find modifier, go into properties panel, then go to this wrench, this modifier tools, we're going to add modifier, we're going to add the simple deform to this. We're going to go to bend, let's move this down, and let's put this origin point to the center. So I'm going to go transform to center, transform to center of mass surface, not working. Okay, let me just X this out for a bit. Object transform to center of mass surface. Not sure why it is not going to the center of this circle. Okay, it doesn't go to the center of the circle. Let me go ahead and just select the point here. With my 3D cursor. Shift S cursor selected and object transform to 3D cursor. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, let's add the modifier again, simple to form and let's go to bend and automatically 
you know, we've got this teardrop effect here, which is looks like the location marker. If we increase the angle, you can see that it becomes more skewed. You know, and um, right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change it. And you have to move the origin point to the top of the circle or the bottom, whichever one you choose in order to do this effect, or else it's not going to work. Looks like I accidentally created two circles, you know. Looks like I accidentally created two circles. Ah, never mind. Good. So with this now, we have our location marker with an easy simple to form. So we won't need the second circle here. And you see that it takes the shape of the location marker, but we have to go to bend and increase the angle. And you see it start to look like a location marker. Good. Select everything and press F. So we're gonna go into tab, everything, press A to select everything and then press F. And now we're going to apply this so we don't have to go back into it again. And next we need to go to the shape and we need to put a circle in the middle of the shape. Good, so I'm going to hit Alt and left click to select everything on this edge. Just delete this edge altogether. Right. So Alt and left click is for edge select or for ring select. And that got rid of the extra circle that I accidentally made. So with this now, we need to punch a circle. We're gonna create a cylinder. So we're gonna go to add mesh and cylinder. Good, let's scale down the cylinder, lift this up here. And let's go ahead and bring it here and scale it down with S. Then if I press zero to go to camera mode and look, we see that the cylinder is indeed in the right place. We're gonna select the two of these. Well, I just gonna select the, the location marker. Then we're gonna to navigate to the um, properties editor. We're gonna to go to modifiers and then we're gonna to go to Boolean. And we're gonna select the cylinder for the Boolean mode. And then we're gonna to go to operation and select difference. Good, so this will take the difference between the cylinder and this location marker. We're gonna go ahead and apply, press tab and delete this. Well, let's delete the cylinder first and then press tab. And we can see that we have a perfect location marker. Great, it's the perfect location marker. We're going to duplicate this twice and let's move them, you know, into position. Good, and let's duplicate this one. Let's take this second duplicate here oh. and move it across into position and just pan out so we can see where we're placing it. All right, awesome. Let's increase the size of this one now. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and set the origin point. It's right now at the top, but we want the origin point at the bottom. So we're going to select, press tab to go to edit mode. You're going to select the bottom vertice here. And then we're going to hit shift and S. You move cursor to selected. So that's the snap tool. You can go into mesh and snap here to find it. Good. And next we're going to go to transform and we're going to go into tab mode we're going to go object transform to 3d cursor whoops oh, let's go back and do this again let's do this s cursor to selected tab object transform go to 3d cursor and let's just delete these two actually 
good. I would apply it. Actually, no. Let's just apply it to these two and done. Because it took a little while to replace. Select the bottom most vertice, Shift S, cursor to selected. Go press Tab to come out of edit mode. Go to Object Transform in the File menu. And we're going to go to Origin to 3D cursor. Good. And do the same for this. Select the bottom most vertice, Shift S, cursor to selected. Press Tab to come out of edit mode. Go to Object in your 3D viewpoint file menu. Go to Transform and Origin to 3D Cursor. That way, if we scale it, we see it scales from the bottom, and that's what we want. We want it to scale from the bottom to give us a pop. Good. So now we have all the elements here ready to be animated. I'm just going to go ahead and add some of the textures now, you know, to this. To this piece here, we're going to add mango fade gold, and we're going to have add going to add um dark orange. So we're going to go to our material point here, and which is in our properties panel with the folded paper selected. And we're going to add these two to add another one, add another material. Just press add down here and then add your appropriate material. So we added dark orange and mango fade, which is the two textures. Of the original piece and what we're going to do next is that we need to go to the mesh port tool go to shape keys and we just need to select bases so that when we go into edit mode it doesn't return to the folded state good so we're going to select these four vertices here and we're going to assign the dark orange Select these four vertices here, and we're going to assign the dark orange. And if we press F12, we see that we have the same sort of look. Good. I think these could scale up a bit more. Alright, so press F12 again. Yeah, it's looking much better. Now let's give these guys a solid color too. I'm going to link the material. So press Ctrl and L to link the material to this one. So if we change the material of this, everything else will change. Shadeless, let's make it a gray. And everything else will become a gray as it should if we link it correctly. Let's link materials again. Ctrl L, materials, right. So everything is linked. Good. So all we have to do now is move this Bezier circle out of the way and we can get to animating this after we've created our pop and it should be a simple animation so let's go ahead with the paper selected let's go to our mesh panel go to key 1 insert a keyframe in the value let's move it to frame 30 and close it so let's see how it looks okay it's closing slow but we'll work with the slowness for now Good. So let's go ahead and just clear these keyframes. Delete keyframe and you know, delete keyframe. Right. So what we want to do, have it move from zero. So key well, so keyframe from zero. And I'm gonna go to ten frames and have it show up. It should work a bit faster. Good. So let's only use ten frames here. Good. On 10 frames, we want, it, want all of these to pop up. So we're just going to have this pop up at the 10 frames. So we want at about 7 or 8 frames. Let's make it 7. We want all of these to be at 0. So first, I'm going to just set it for 1. And then we can apply it to the others. So we're going to make the scale 0, you know. And then at 10, we're going to have it pop up. Good. So at 10, insert keyframe. And then at frame 7, let's just scroll this up so that you can see what's happening a bit better. At frame 7 now, we're going to have this disappear. Insert keyframe. Great. So we see this pop up. Good. And 
we want as it pops up we also want it to jump up and jump down so we're going to have a Y location pop up have the Y location move up a bit and then it's going to come back down again to where it was originally so this 0 0.5 here going to have it come back down and insert single keyframe good so we can see it's popping up just nicely good and we can increase the pop a bit good all right so this pop looks relatively okay good and we want to have this popped as well so let's go ahead and just link all of the just select everything and make sure that the animated my arm um, location marker is selected last so it's the active selected element and we're going to hit Control and l i'm going to link the animation data so all of them are going to pop up now great but the only thing is that some of them have some of them has moved in position so we're just going to have to go ahead and move it down and we're going to use the delta transform that's the transform down here and move it on the y-axis bring it down in the same way select this one move it on the z and then use delta on the y to bring it down a bit good it's delta transform let's bring it back a little bit good and this looks good so if we play it now everything pops up good and then lastly we want the path to animate as soon as it pops up good so about here it's going to start animating so let's go into our make sure it's selected go into our curve panel part of the properties panel we're going to go to geometry and then we're going to click start insert keyframe um, we're going to put start to one in place the keyframe and by the time it comes down to frame 20 we want it to fill in insert keyframe so let's go ahead let's take a look okay it's a bit fast so i'm going to go to the dope sheet editor and move it along a bit okay give it a bit more space awesome right good and we're going to add a little bit of overshoot onto our our paper here so it's going to go ahead and select this arrow down here in the dope sheet which will only include keyframes for the paper good and we want it to have a little bit of overshoot so let's go ahead and see if we can um, add that for it good so at down here we're just going to have the value just slide down a little bit good and we're going to keyframe that afterwards good so you see it has a little snapback a little overshoot you know and that should work out okay that kind of throws off the thing right here which is okay I guess what I should have done is that um, when I set the keyframe, I should have just made it a bit wider. But that's okay. You can always set that, you know, a later time. The keyframes, instead of that, what I'll do then is that I'll use the scale. And we use the scale on the x-axis. So we'll have it at this scale, you know, about at frame 15 only for the x-axis though insert single keyframe and then here we'll have it scale a little bit more on the x-axis so keyframe so it has a little bounce back good so have it scale a bit more good all right and that concludes the map pop tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, no, oh, and we do need to stagger these also, but we'll just do it with this last part. If you have any questions, 
you know, be sure to ask them. You know, um, if you have any suggestions for the running of the tutorial, um, I'll be happy to take those suggestions. I have a lot to learn and I am happy to learn. So, you know, feel free to feel free to um, let me know. I much appreciate those those that feedback. You know, we press U to stagger it. You know, and you can go through and stagger them. You to unlink them and then you stagger them. You know, just in case you're wondering what we did. Good. So, if you enjoy this tutorial, just go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. And until I see each other, until we see each other again, get up and design a new dawn. Later.